Hey, I'm Gaur and I have two new DCTLs, the 6-Vector Contrast and 6-Vector Sat Shaper. Then I have updates to all of my 6-Vector tools, which now include, finally, a Skin Vector. And this is differently implemented than the one in Resolve 19's Color Slice, which is very important. And then I have added exposure steps to the gray card, so it finally has some more uses than just showing middle gray. But let's jump into Resolve and see what it's all about. First, let's take a look at the seventh skin vector. I'll demo it on the six vector density, but as I said, this is included in every single six vector DCTL I have. In terms of modifying density, it works like any other vector, where you just either move it to the right to increase density or to the left to decrease it. Just like any other vector. But there is a major difference in how this vector is actually qualified. If you look at Resolve 19's color slice, it implements the vector qualifications very similarly to my six vector tools. But there is a difference in the skin vector, where color slice has put the skin vector in between the red and yellow vectors, which means that if you change the skin vector, the red and yellow also change. In addition to that, the red and yellow vectors are limited by the skin vector. With my implementation, the skin vector is separate from all the other vectors. It just sits on top of them. If I highlight the skin vector and change red or the yellow vector, nothing happens to the skin vector because it's separate and you can shift its target hue and its width without having to worry about messing other vectors up. This can also clearly be seen with this view where the skin vector moves about as it wishes, while if you change any of the other vectors, its neighbors move as well, exactly like with color slice. Now, when it comes to the six vector sat shaper, let's imagine that you have a scene which has something very saturated that you want to bring down because it just jumps out of the scene and something of similar hue, but that is less saturated and you want to keep as is. Well, the sat shaper can help with that. Let's see how it works. Now in this shot, I'd say the blue neon lights are just way too harsh. So I'll find the blue vector and move max blue down. The max slider is essentially just a saturation slider. And if you're wondering which type of saturation, well, you can switch it between subtractive and additive. But the problem is that if you were to just bring the blues down with saturation, well, all the blue things in the shot become desaturated equally. But you might not want to desaturate the less saturated things. So there's the boost slider for each of the vectors, which allows you to add some color back in to the lower saturated areas. And as a result, I have brought down the overall saturation. But if we look at the flags in the corner, their saturation doesn't change almost at all. Then we have six vector contrast, which is yet another tool in your look creation or shot to shot correcting toolbox where you can target different areas, like, for example, skin tones, give some pops to them, or maybe inversely, if the difference between the key and field side is too big, you can decrease contrast and help it that way. And as usual with my tools, by default, the pivot point is set on middle gray, based on which transfer function you choose from here, but you can modify the pivot, which works in stops, and also you can change whether the contrast curves are linear or SCAV. Well, there you go. If you like what you saw, you can find links down below to everything, including the demo pack, which allows you to test everything out for free with a watermark on top. And uh, also, while you're down there, let me know what you think of these updates and what kind of tools would you like to see in the future. I've been Gaur, and see you next time.